This is Matt for Interbox and Bill Axe. We're joined once again by Dan Raphael. Dan, we witnessed an upset tonight on a big proportion. I know a lot of people were overlooking Dimitri Bivol tonight. What did you make of the fight and did you expect that type of performance from him? Uh, no, I didn't. I mean, I'll be honest, you know, we did the video before I thought that Canelo would win the fight, but I definitely, in, in the pre-fight conversations I had with a variety of different people, said, look, don't, over, don't overlook this dude. He's a prime, fresh guy. He's in his, you know, much better spot in his career than, say, Kovalev was when mm -hmm. he fought him at light heavyweight, uh, in his first light heavyweight fight, Canelo, that is, and he shouldn't be overlooked. He, you know, and Eddie made a great point also, and I hadn't even thought of, and this was during the fight week, that for all the, the positive attributes that, that Bivol had, whether it was his size, his reach, his jab, his boxing skills, his you know background as a top, top quality amateur. At his stage of his career, he's never been in hard fights. He was fresh, legs are fresh, you know, spirit is fresh, and he's going after it. And and Kovalev wasn't quite like that. And I think that the super middleweights were out muscled, out gunned by him. Uh, a Callum Smith, a Billy Joe, a Yildrum, of course, and certainly Caleb Plant in the last fight in the knockout, and also Billy Joe with the face broken. So. Sometimes if you if you're Canelo and you, you go on that kind of streak and you're just battering these guys, you feel invincible. Yeah. You're going to go up and I can beat any of these guys. I mean, look, they were talking about fighting Alexander Usyk this week. They were talking about fighting, you know, again as a cruiserweight. They were fighting, the, you know, thinking about the winner of the Joe Smith uh, um, Derby fight for the undisputed. And I'm not saying they were. Don't, I don't believe that they were overlooking uh, people at all because that's just not Canelo's mentality. He's able to kind of uh, do two things at once, walk and chew gum at the same time, as they say. So, yeah. but I know he was thinking he's going to be moving into those fights. And now the question is going to be, do they take the rematch or do they go to the Triple G fight or do they do something else or do they take a break? I mean, he left it open-ended at the press conference. I know what he said in the ring. And I know what he said at the early part of the press conference. At the end of the press conference, when I asked him about that specifically, he was non-committal to either Bivol, Triple G, or even that he would be fighting in September. They're going to take some time, decompress. It's a hard, hard loss. He's won, what, he was 15-0-1 yeah. since the Mayweather loss, and that's a long time ago. Yeah. Just the, the draw with Golovkin. Um, you know, he's going to wake up and he's going to realize, you know, when he watches that back, that was not my best night. One thing that was quite clear to me and many others, um, he seemed to fatigue really early in this fight. The gas tank seemed to have emptied, for me, around four. That's, um, yeah. And he was very tired. Would you look at this now and say, if you're him, and I know he'll do exactly what he wants, he's nothing to prove really in terms of keep going up, keep going up. Would you say, take the Triple G Trilogy fight, go down that road, and then do what you want after kind of thing? Because like you said, Big, big risk again, and if he takes a second loss in a row, it's a, it's, it, could, it could be a difficult, difficult road yeah, back. I mean, I, again, I understand the pride. I understand the desire to write, you know, what he thinks is the wrong, to get that back, to get revenge. But you have to also consider your entire career and understand that sometimes you're swimming upstream. And it's not going to necessarily be successful if you're if you have a manager that really cares about your career, you know. And obviously, he can't. Nobody can make Canelo not take the rematch. Eddie Hearn can't make him do it. Eddie Reynoso can't make him do it. Um, you're gonna have to talk to him and, and, and be real with him. Don't no, don't be yes manning to him. Say, listen, this is what I think. And if, if they really think that that that's not a good fight for us to take again, I think that that would be a, a terrible. Cho I mean, again, my opinion. Uh, if they take the rematch, I respect Canelo and and Eddie and Eddie. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's me and they ask my opinion I say what do you need it for I go in a different direction you can make a gazillion dollars you give the fans a big event you don't need to meet your people in your life is a rematch with Bivol almost now like looking at too much of a mountain's climb because I know the judges scorecards were I mean surprisingly although the outcome was right for boxing to hear that the first four rounds were all scored for Canelo and that he needed to win that last round I mean that's absolutely mind-blowing. So talk to me about that and how surprised you were with that all three having... Look, the three judges they had on the panel tonight, Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfeld, are arguably three of the top five yeah. judges in the whole sport. So it's, it's hard for me to like get on their case a lot. I have a ma massive respect for them. I, I've met and known all three of those guys over the years. Surprising. They're, they're honest people. It's, this is not funny business. They had him winning four of the first uh, four rounds. I had Canelo winning three of the first four rounds, but not all four rounds. Um, you know, they're sitting on different sides of the ring. They're looking yeah. at the fight from a different angle. It's, it's, you know, they got it right. What can I say? At the end of the day, they got it right. Yeah. I think that was one of the most pleasing things for me because we always see these stories in boxing when it gets in, you hear the words, and win a by split decision, and you think, please, no. How good was it for boxing tonight that the right man who was against it all week um, and in terms of this got the decision and got his moment in the sun? Of course. I mean, anytime you see it fairly scored, the right guy won the fight, you know, who, who, who really did it in the ring, and that was just reflected on the cards. You know, if we think that maybe it was a little too close, that's good for boxing. It was a big event. 
Canelo should be applauded for taking the, the chance to do it, have the balls to do it. I don't want to hear anybody dumping on him and say he's exposed or yeah. he's this or he's that. You know, he's still a great fighter. He just lost the fight. I mean, every Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, I mean, name all the all-time greats. Pacquiao, Floyd, he's the only one that didn't lose you know, among the all-time greats like that. Uh, Marciano retired undefeated, but it's yeah. highly uncommon. So it is a good night for boxing because, and, not, and, and by the way, the end of the day, the single most important thing in my mind, if you spent the money on the pay-per-view, it was a hell of a fight. Absolutely. It's a good fight to watch. Dan Raphael, thanks for talking to me to a boxing. It's been a pleasure meeting you this week and hopefully we can catch up again in Vegas again. Most definitely. Appreciate